Today on the On.NET Show, we're going to be learning about Content Moderator, which uses machine learning to moderate content at scale. Take a look. Hey, welcome to another episode of the On.NET Show. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Content Moderator. I'm your host, Rich Lander, and here's Sanjeev. So, how about you introduce yourself and then we'll get into the topic. Sure, Richard. Um, I'm Sanjeev Jagtap and I'm a product manager for Content Moderator. The Content Moderator is one of the cognitive services product uh, that provides machine-assisted content moderation uh, using both um, APIs as well as human review tools okay. for images, text, and videos. Okay. So, I often hear this term, um, cognitive toolkit or CNTK. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about that at Microsoft all the time. Sure. Um, how does that relate? How does Content Moderator relate to the Cognitive Toolkit? Yes, so, and I think we'll go through the block diagram a little bit later. Okay. But you will see there are layers of technologies being used, right? And so at the bottommost layer, the scanning of content gets really is being done with classifiers and which are based on toolkits like CNTK, for example. So okay. that's where, so at the, at the bottom layer, you have the machine learning or deep learning based classifiers. On that is the engineering layer, the web service layer. And in our case, we have the human in the loop review solution as well on top of that. Okay, so this one, uh, you know, um, in Azure, we have some very kind of like raw products, and I don't mean raw in a negative way, mm -hmm. but like storage is kind of a more yeah. um, yes. fundamental, is a better word, product. This sounds like it's more in the finished yes. product side of things. You yes. know, there's kind of an end-to-end -end scenario that you guys have and you've kind of covered a bunch of it. Is that is that fair? That is correct. So uh, we do that, we go broad. We like to go broad and then we go deep, right? Yeah. And what we want to do is make it as easy as possible for developers to use this technology. It's literally three lines of code that you can send an image and get all kinds of insights from it, right? In terms of offensiveness and content moderation perspective. But that, that's right, we want to make it a finished API and then we also want to layer in a human in the loop tool because we know that it's when AI augments human in the loop decision making process, that's when you get the best results, especially for the more nuanced cases. Yeah. Humans are actually useful. <laughs> I've, I've heard this. <laughs> that's exactly right. Okay, so it looks like you've got a little bit of content, so maybe we should go through that. Okay, sure. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah, so the first thing, I guess, uh, the first question I get is, well, who are your customers, right? For sure. And uh, the easy answer is that pretty much anyone in the world who wants to keep bad content out from their properties, websites, and protect their users and their brand, they need content moderation. So they're, uh, yes, online marketplaces are obvious because they need to moderate their product catalogs coming in. I mean, they have tons of content coming in mm -hmm. from the suppliers and vendors. Social media messaging platforms are big users of our technology. Right, enterprises, right, with documents, uh, which are employees, or these are enterprises with big uh, products that consumers are using, designers are using, right, and think of the assets being created at runtime. Gaming companies, uh, right, uh, who are doing the same. And then last but not the least is the content moderation service providers. Remember, these guys have been clean, keeping the internet clean for a number of years now, right, and so they are ripe to use AI to do that work and reduce the harmful effects of bad content on people. I so see. that's the that's the other interesting is, vertical. Is this like net nanny? Is that um, I might be dating myself there. Like what's an example of a content moderation service provider? Yeah. Oh these are people, you know, you hear about stories all the time, right? These are businesses who are taking in content from companies like a social media website, like a Facebook or or you know Twitter and so on and and have human moderation teams sitting okay. and looking at the stuff, trying yeah. to filter out. But essentially, anywhere where you have user-generated content coming in at scale, exactly. that's where you need a service like this. Exactly, okay. yes. And so the problems we are solving from them is the brand and customer risk, uh, of course, to their companies. And then also when they want to apply uh, uh, the AI and machine learning part, it's a huge investment for these companies, right? And uh, plus the tools. Content moderation hasn't gotten the attention of you know, software companies like uh, like other verticals have. And so what we do is... So we're coming to the rescue. That's, yes, that's what I hear you saying. Of course, because it's a, it's a hard problem, first of all. It's a really hard problem. Uh, the difficulty is increasing, right? Every year, people find new ways of creating toxic, bad content on the internet. And you want to keep your families, employees, users safe. And so mm -hmm. it's a problem that's growing like crazy, thanks to the internet explosion. Yeah. Well, it, it seems like it's actually two parts, I think. One is the safety part, and yeah. the other one is there is just a huge amount of um, negative content. And even if you weren't offended by it, you don't want to wade through it 
-hmm. either. You want kind of the signal to noise ratio to be yes um, to be good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I like to say is, a content moderator not only allows you to keep bad, actual explicit bad content out of your stuff and create a good experience. But even let other AI insights, so think of other cognitive services who are creating these phenomenal insights for customers, right? You know, it's a whole signal to noise thing, right? If you keep the bad stuff out, it makes it easier for the good insights exactly. to come up. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So here's a quick overview of what this platform is all about. We call it a platform because we have a set of APIs and services. So customers can right now sign up for our moderation APIs from Azure. Right, and Photo DNA is a service that is specifically about child abuse material exploitation. We won't talk about that today, uh, but we also offer uh, moderation on images, text, and videos. For images, um, you can moderate for adult racy uh, content. Uh, you can detect faces, and you can also detect text within images. Right, and that theme of adult racy and offensive, you'll notice it goes across image, text, I and videos, see that. except that text, of course, has a PII element to it, which is your personally identifiable information, right, and profanity filtering. Right, so I'm guessing the difference between adult and racy is like nudity versus swimsuits, is that? That is correct. Okay. And that's pretty much it, yeah. Now, okay, makes sense. Right, and then, um, remember, you can, yes, you can be calling these APIs, but if you imagine millions of content units being passed, and you're getting those insights, and some decisions are easy. Uh, right. If they're clearly uh, above your threshold of what you can allow, then block it. If not, then you know you let it go. But what happens in that nuance, in that middle range, right, where you're kind of not sure? And at the scale at which this content is getting scanned, there are a lot of cases. That's why you have stories of human moderators sitting in far-flung offices and and you know, looking over this content. So what we did was we built in a review API layer on that. And that is really a bridge uh, between the scanning that's going on, the machine assisted scanning, and the human in the loop solution at the top, where you could have your teams uh, taking final decisions on the content. And that's the, and what we do is, uh, to kind of give you visibility into those decisions, we'll pass all the data back to your, uh, your systems through a uh, callback endpoint and so on. But what we focus on is completing the loop, finishing the loop from APIs to human in the loop and giving you the final results. Because we believe it's when AI augments Humans, that's when you get the best decisions. Right, and so I see with these different content types, those are the content types that you typically do see on the internet. You know, that text, image, video, that's kind that's of it. Much it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and so we wanted to make sure, again, the breadth is important because what you don't want customers, as customers, I don't want to go to three different vendors or three different companies and, yeah, uh, yeah. and then having to integrate all of those services. That so sounds like it's a one-stop solution for all media formats. Okay. Yeah. So let's dig deeper into the APIs now. So this slide. Okay, so now we're kind of getting more to the developer side That's of the right. equation. Good. Exactly, yes. So we looked at the product overview, and now this is what developers will see. And even this is a very high level view of the template or the block, right? So developers will sign up on Azure, right? And they will use an API endpoint to call our service. Yep. They will have an API key that they have signed up from Azure. Uh, they will input their content, it could be image text or video, certain settings, but the output is always a JSON formatted text, formatted output, right, with certain labels, scores, and insights. And that's the general structure for all our APIs. Yeah, I mean, so far, you know, this is almost as simple as using um, Azure Blob Storage. Yes. Um, what you just described. Yep. I just, I, I like to say, think of this as your little coding function, right? One function procedure call in the internet. Yeah, right? so exactly. So class your content and get the insights back. So. You know, this is image APIs, and again, you will notice the only difference is that you are passing an image, right, to the API, and then uh, evaluating for adult or racy faces. So, but these inputs are image specific now, uh, and the output that you are getting is, you know, adult or racy, true, false, scores, faces matched with image list. This is interesting because um, you know sometimes uh, a lot of the content is actually uh, sometimes it's less unique content, but mostly it's recirculated or reshared a lot number of times. And sometimes companies know that these images will appear, this content will appear, but we are okay with that. So you don't want to scan again and again. Right. So that's what we allow companies to do here. Now with the faces, do you just detect the fact that you know, there are these faces at these particular coordinates um, in the image? Or can you have um, a database, like could I upload a bunch of pictures and I have a database, like say I'm just uploading my photo collection, mm -hmm. and I want to know which particular pictures from my photo collection have pictures of me. Right. Um, does that service do that, or is it just saying there are faces? Exactly. So it is just saying there are faces, right? Okay. What you want to do is from a moderation perspective, and again, think PII moderation. 
So just the knowledge that there are faces in here is, is already valuable. Okay. But that's a shout out to our face API, which is the other cognitive service okay. that we want to does, call. Does it to do something more similar to what I just Face recognition and our inter, you know, uh, face matching and all of that good stuff will come from our face API. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And so that's an example here, I'll usually uh, the demo, it's a small demo where, uh, but you can already see uh, the, uh, the format of the JSON uh, kind of sample extract here, right? So can we do a quick demo here? Yeah, let's point? do it. Okay, so I'll open up my Visual Studio that's already open. And this is an image moderation, a sample code, right? And if we go through this code very quickly, all it is doing is it is picking up certain sample files and you will notice the sample files are right here. The sample file I'm using is a simple text file with links to these sample images, right? And so this code is really checking for that folder and file and it's calling uh, moderate images. Now the moderate image, uh, predictable enough, it just really iterates through those five images uh, by calling those URLs from that notepad file. And this in turn is calling this moderate image function. And here, this is where we are calling the actual REST API, the URL, uh, right? And, and using and passing the image URL and index to kind of build the URL. But really, and then finally, getting the insights back, and that's the response you get back. So it's literally one line of code that you pass your image and you get the insights back that you want. Okay. And that's make, the beauty of it, right? Sense. And so let's quickly um, run this here. I think I saw some opportunities to use async await uh, in that code. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah, of course. We'll, we'll do that afterwards. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, what it, as you can tell, right, it, it kind of starts moderating it and then save the response there. Um, and so, and just to give an example, if I click on this one image here, let's, let's click on this, right? So this, okay. is a, this is an image. We've got some swimsuits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, uh, and then, and so let's look at, the, like, look at the output of this image here, and let's see whether we got any oh, raciness. And sure enough, is racy classified was true because uh, the score was beyond the threshold of the racy. And so what you have here are these scores and then you have the Boolean corresponding values. Okay. And these Boolean values are set to true or false depending on the, whether they exceed the threshold, and internal thresholds Okay, and you guys own the threshold. We own the thresholds, but then our customers can also, of course, you know, have your own custom threshold. Okay. And, and they can use, they can switch their logic based on their own scores that they see. So the idea is that you sign up for content moderator, pass, scan your data in, to kind of get a really good uh, idea of uh, what kind of insights your content is generating because the reality is, every business's content will be slightly different and will have certain behaviors. Makes sense. Okay, so that was the image thing. And then we have the text uh, moderation. And so here, again, the idea is the same idea, except that you're now looking, checking text for um, classification, adulteracy, offensive, PII, uh, and then again, matching against custom terms that you want to match uh, specifically, right? And so this is the kind of a sample output uh, that you get from the API where the any match terms, like the crap term, mm. is a built-in profanity. So what we do is, customers though, when they sign up for the service, they're also getting a built-in database of profanities and bad terms in 100 plus languages, right? And so that's what this is matching against, but they can also upload their own custom terms and they don't have to be profanities, they can be very business specific too. And that's what some of our customers are using in that way as well. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so if I quickly go into uh, Visual Studio here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You guys must have quite the uh, unit test suite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is again here, the sample files are, this is the input.txt, and you, I've got three simple oh. text messages, right? And you can probably guess what, what we're looking for in those. And so if I run our program here, yeah, let's do, a, and so now it is reading the text and saving the response. So let's go back. Now I'm curious what it's going to do with that spelling mistake. Yeah. So let's find out, right? So the, yeah, the, the word lazy was misspelled here. So let's take a look at the first output. And notice this is the original text, right? Oh, we got some autocorrect going and on there. There's an autocorrector. It was the spelling was corrected to the right spelling. Uh, in, in addition to that, right, we had what else was useful here? That was the autocorrection, I guess, yeah. The autocorrection feature coming in here. There was no PII detected here, right? There was nothing yeah. offensive about this, and so on. I think I had, would I, let's, let me go back to the input.txt, yeah. 
And so now let us look at the output, the second output for the second uh, text. So this was the original text, right? And so sure enough, in this case, mm. there was some PII detected, a potential PII, right? Email addresses, uh, phone number. Oh, there was a phone number, right? Country code US. Uh, and then in terms of classification, it was all good. There was nothing offensive about it, but there was a PII that was detected okay. here. Yeah. So we should probably um, switch to, um, I think you were going to show that uh, human, the human tool. Yep, yeah, okay. We should probably switch to yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So let me get back. Right. So uh, this is a good starting point for the human review tool, right? So imagine moderation is completed. Now what do you do? <laughs> what do you do with the moderated output, right? So we allow block or you can review the nuance cases. Now, for nuance cases, normally companies will outsource their uh, human moderation to outside companies, third mm. parties, or they have, will have their some in-house tool. And what you can do is either you can continue to use your own system and your own team, or uh, you can use our built-in review tool that we provide with the service. There is no extra charge for it. It's included in your subscription. Makes sense. Right. And so, and so uh, what, what this talk about, like everything else, all our tools and products have an API that work as a front end, so it's easy to integrate. So let's talk about the review API here. Uh, what I'm talking about here is the review operation here. All it does, it will create a review in the human review tool. So what's the, uh, what's the usefulness? The usefulness is that you could be using your own machine learning APIs or from any other company or your own built-in technology or your own logic for that matter. It doesn't matter what it is, but you can still use our human in the loop tool by creating a review. And all it takes, the input, is really just a metadata of tags that you want to assign to your tool and the tool will render it. Right, so you're saying, you can use a human with this tool, or you can just use this as a queue mm -hmm. for your own uh, AI um, system or whatever. Data labeling, for example. Yeah. yeah, so all of those use cases here. Now we do have the job API, job operation as well. Now that's where companies will use it as a one-stop solution because if you call this job operation with your content and you give it to your review team, this is a new parameter you'll notice because remember, the human moderation teams are working here and you could have sub-teams there. So that's an extra parameter, but this will moderate your content by calling in the underlying APIs, such as image or text, and then it will evaluate a workflow. A workflow is something that sits in the review tool that you can define, which are your custom thresholds and criteria. and depending on the workflow, it will create a review or not. Right. Okay, makes sense. So I have kind of two um, questions. One is, um, is there a NuGet package for this, or you just call the REST endpoint directly? Um, and then um, how do you sign up for the service? Is it in the Azure portal? Yeah, so uh, the samples that I was showing you, the demos today, they're all using the directly the REST API okay. through .NET, but we also have a .NET SDK as well, right? So in fact, I have the whole, uh, if I open up uh, my, uh, so these are the samples, uh, .NET samples, and where you can go to find these are right here, let me, I thought I had the page open, so let me go back. Okay. And so if you click the SDK option, you will find there's a .NET SDK right here that you can use. And so yes, it's on, you know, so you can download the NuGet in your Visual Studio and use the .NET SDK or you could call the REST API. It's totally up to you. Okay. And yeah, the REST API looked fairly simple. Yes. But obviously, if using the NuGet package is probably the best experience, I take it. That is right, of yeah. course. And uh, in terms of starting, well, how do you sign up for this? So the easiest way is to click the get started button. It takes you to our online review tool where you can sign up, right, using your MSA or using a local user uh, login. And then uh, you can essentially um, stay, let me do stay. You, can, you will be taken into the tool where you can define a team or you can just get started and you can try image and text moderation right here. Right? Oh so really, so you could just upload an image? You and don't have to write it. any code to, uh, to experience the moderation features and experience the workflow here, right here. And we even provide you sample images which are used here right now. Okay. Right, and similarly for text as well. So you can use text and so let me use the default text and I submit it. And you will notice it will now review the text Oh, then we get to and there's the PII highlighted. Nice. Right? So that's how it works. And here too, you could actually do the same, which is maybe you have an image sitting on your hard drive somewhere, and you can try that. Uh, here, actually, try image, right? And you can choose a file or something. All right, anyway. Uh, okay. 
Not a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, you could upload <laughs> an image and, and take a look at the insights here. In terms of starting out, you can either go from here, from the review tool, or if you just want to start with the API directly, right? Not have to deal with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, with the human in the loop uh, process here. Then the easiest way is to press the quick start. And the quick start page is really good in terms of giving you three options. Start with the review tool or subscribe on Azure. Right, uh, in the Azure portal. Okay. Right, and so there is the explanation. Or you can also start, actually, what we are finding is uh, we have flow connectors for a content moderator. And so a lot of MVPs and a lot of consultants and a lot of uh, even our own Microsoft uh, field uh, personnel are finding Using flow us. to be a really good way to get started and show something to their customers. And we have templates available okay. here. So it's kind of a more visual way to do it. Yeah, exactly. So you can you have all kinds of options. Sign up for the review tool, start with the APIs, uh, and then move on to the review tool, or just start Flow. Uh, okay, yeah. nice. Okay, well, thanks for stopping by today. Um, this is great. I can totally see where, where this fits in, and probably a bunch of .NET developers would want to use this in their app. Sounds good. Yeah, we should, we should give, <laughs> now's definitely the time to give, to give feedback. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Richard. It was a pleasure coming here. Meeting okay. You. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for watching another episode of On.net. And today was about the content moderator with Sanjeev. Thanks for watching. <laughs>